A single oyster is going to filter about 50 to 60 gallons of water a day. So, I mean, add that up in the course of a three-year lifespan, what that's able to do. We tell people that for every oyster of ours that, that you eat, we put 12 back over into the water next year. So it's one of the best things you can actually do for the environment is to eat farm-raised oysters. So in effect, I mean, you eat a dozen oysters and you've effectively sponsored, you know, a million gallons of, of filtered water. I'm Ryan Croxton. I'm Travis Croxton. We're cousins and oyster farmers. And we're here today at the mouth of the Rappahannock River, just as it approaches the Chesapeake Bay in the great state of Virginia. Rappahannock means where the tide ebbs and flows. And the Chesapeake historically means the uh, Great Shellfish Bay. 2001, which is when we got into the business, it was the absolute low for the Chesapeake Bay. I think we harvested about 21,000 bushels versus the 20 million bushels we were doing in 1880s. And that's, that's what we started with, was the bay at its absolute low. That means there was absolutely no industry to support. So when we got back into this, you were basically reinventing an industry that was, you know, long since gone. There weren't trucks. There were there was no infrastructure to move oysters because there weren't oysters. We didn't even have an idea of actually starting a business. It was just let's do this to kind of resurrect the memory of our, our grandfather. And as we got into it, we learned that we had a chance to actually resurrect the, the Chesapeake. When we came into oysters back in 2001 and we were starting to do our investigation, the conversation of the day was really around. One, putting the native species on the endangered species list. That's how bad it had gotten. And then two, there was talk about introducing a non-native species. At no point did we ever feel like um, introducing a non-native species was the, was the right step. And, you know, call us nostalgic because we were, you know, holding on to our great grandfather and grandfather's oyster company. But it was also, it just felt like a, we hadn't exhausted all the hope that could be had for, for the uh, native species. Aquaculture hadn't been, hadn't been tried, you know, on, on scale. We try and teach people that, you know, aquaculture comes in various shades, and this is one of those rare instances where aquaculture is really a good word. And the reason is because the way we grow our oysters is using the natural process. We use the natural water. Our cultured product grows right next to a wild product. It eats the same food. It lives in the same environment. The only thing that's different is that it's literally in a cage. And since they're, you know, inert animals, it's not like we're prohibiting them from free range. They're, they're going to stay still no matter where they are. So this, this actually gives them better access to food. So the benefit of aquaculture versus uh, wild harvest is that we're not dredging the bottom, scraping up the bottom, tearing up grasses, pulling all kinds of bycatch. We're able to grow these in cages that have feet on them that actually elevate them from the bottom. So it keeps them out of the mud where they get cleaner, clearer water to be able to filter. Uh, and they're also just not gonna have that grit in them that they would otherwise. Uh, and when we go to extract them to, to actually harvest, we're not damaging anything to get them out. We literally just lift them up and we're able to work the cage and put the cage back. So the Chesapeake, we were able to actually rescue the native oyster before we lost the wild populations. And today there are really only two wild populations um, left in the world where you can still harvest wild. And that's the Gulf of Mexico and the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, we had to kind of help lead the wave, the, we call it the oyster renaissance of the Chesapeake Bay. And uh, we're happy to actually say that right now there's probably like a couple hundred oyster companies doing what we can do, which is fantastic because more oysters in the bay, a cleaner bay, a better bay for everybody.